is Marcy Kelso, who is the executive director of the Light Factory, Contemporary Museum of Photography and Film, and Nancy Pierce, who's a photographer. Thank you for coming on the show. Pleasure Great to be here. So tell us a little bit about River Docks, how it got started, and what people could expect to see if they attend the exhibit. Well, a number of years ago, as we were talking about different areas to exhibit at the Light Factory, one issue that we felt very strongly about was the Catawba River, mm -hmm. and that it was really a resource that a lot of people in the region didn't know about. There were some things happening like the White Water Park and Catawba mm -hmm. River Keepers that was beginning to bring it in focus, and we thought it might make a wonderful project for artists to document. And at the same time we were thinking about that, a curator named um, uh, June Lambla was also thinking about that and we came together and born from that was River Ducks. And how many artists are involved? There are actually um, five artists involved. Mm -hmm. um, Nancy is one of them. Mm -hmm. We had three photographers who took different sections of the Catawba all the way from the headwaters down to where it becomes another name in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. We had a, a digital artist named Mike Worth who created a digital installation piece. And then Merrick Reynas and Maya Godleskiu created um, beautiful curtains, a graphic piece of the topographical history of the river. Okay. And now the exhibit right now is at the Energy Explorium at McGuire. Yes. Nuclear Station. and. How many pictures are there, or how is it set up? Um, I don't know the exact count. The um, space is smaller than the original venues, which were the Light Factory, which is in okay. Spirit Square in Charlotte, and the Museum of York County down in the Rock Hill area. So it's fewer than the original exhibit. Um, Mike Worth's piece is available. You can go in and interact with that okay. still. Unfortunately, the piece that wouldn't fit were the, um, the curtains that the were curtains. created by Merrick and Maya. Okay. Yeah. Now, it's different parts of the river. Are they all recent photographs or are they...? We um, commissioned Nancy and Raymond Grubb and Byron Baldwin to go out and take, you know, of the moment. I guess this was now two years ago? Correct. Two to three. Yeah, two years, three years ago. Um, photographs of the river and Nancy can talk about that process mm -hmm. and you know her kind of section of the river and how she approached that. Okay. I think what's interesting about this is that the still photographers are very different. We have very different approaches and I mm -hmm. took the lower portion. I was mostly in South Carolina although I did some okay. shooting on Lake Norman mm -hmm. and then Raymond photographed the lakes primarily and, or Byron did, I'm sorry, and Raymond was up north near okay. the Morganton area where he actually was raised. Mm -hmm. And not only did we have different parts of the river, but our styles as photographers are very different. And I think from a viewer's point of view, that's what's really interesting. Well, it sounds like the river's different in all these different areas, too, because you have more of a lake, and then you've got the, the lower half is... Is that more like Lake Wiley down that way? Or? Um, well, south of Lake Wiley, actually, a few people know this, it's, it's kind of wild. In fact, the south state of South Carolina just um, named that... Uh, South Carolina Scenic River, the portion below Lake Wiley down okay. to the uh, Lancaster area. Um, it's very, it's, it's a free-flowing river, it's shallow, it's like the river was before it was dammed. Mm -hmm. And then of course north of Hickory, it's the same way, it's very, or north of Lake James, mm -hmm. that area, it's also very wild and scenic, so, and the lakes are very different. So. And do you mostly do still photography? I mean, other, beyond the, this particular project, what's your area of That's what I do for a job. Yeah, okay. I've, I've been a full-time photographer for 30 years, uh, mm -hmm. and that's all I do all the now, time. Now, what's one of your favorite pictures that you took for this project? Is there anything um, that stands out? That you <coughs> well, I, I flew, um, and I was very fortunate to fly uh, the basin on a clear day in May. It was beautiful, and a lot of the pictures are from that. Uh, flight and the one that's most popular that I get the most requests for after the fact and the one that was on the cake <laughs> <laughs> when the exhibit opened is an aerial of that scenic portion of the river that I mentioned that it, it looks like it did you know a hundred years ago and you can see a, a Native American fish weir that I just think is interesting I very much like history and uh -huh. it's it's on the historic record and it's a, it's a fish trap that is still there um, oh. that you can see oh. from the air but you can't really see it from the ground and the old Nation Ford um, jetty you can see from the air okay. from before the bridges were built and you had to ford the river. So uh, I like that aspect of it. Now what about in the other two portions of, from the other two photographers? Do they have a, a, a picture or photo that stands out more for their well, areas? Well, what's interesting is all three, as you know, like Nancy, are very well-established artists and each have their own approaches. 
Raymond Grubb, who did the northern portion of the river, he makes beautiful platinum and palladium prints, which if you see them are really mystical looking mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know, just beautiful. And Byron Baldwin is actually pretty well known in the region for his black and white photography. Right. He did color photography for this project mm -hmm. and he did panoramics. Oh, okay. And so those are kind of, you know, the styles that he, you know, and if you think about the older part of the river being where Raymond did it, and he used the platinum palladium, Byron, the panoramics where the river becomes wide because of the lake, mm -hmm. and then going back down into, you know, the natural areas that Nancy was able to document. And I have had, oh, go ahead. Although I'm, I'm a photojournalist. That's what I do for a living. Okay. So when you look at my photos, none of them are just pure nature. They're always humans impact on nature. I mean, you see some pretty bad pollution, you see some drought related things, you see it's always humankind's impact on the river. There isn't a single photo in my part of the exhibit that is just like beautiful, pure nature. Mm -hmm. that, that's kind of well, interesting. Well, it's, it's quite a variety because I did have the, the opportunity to go in and see the mm -hmm. exhibit recently and I was amazed and to your point, it wasn't just the beauty of the river or the mm -hmm. beauty of the lakes. There were pictures of trash. And mm -hmm. there were pictures of different things, and it really gave you a great understanding of what we've got right here in our backyard. Mm. And it's interesting, the Light Factory is a museum. We're a museum of photography and film, and we talk about the ability to promote the power of image. Mm -hmm. And really, by seeing the different artistic approaches that each of the photographers took and the subject matter, mm -hmm. it's really amazing that you can see the impact that you know, well, a simple a photograph drain. can have. A drain? I think it was a drain or a, a, a grid. And you could see it was filtering the water, but it was covered. With, and that was one of the photog um, photographs. That oh, I that was one of uh, Byron's. Byron, so, yeah, yeah. It was the intake for a power yes. plant and yeah. a lot of the trash. Yeah. And there was and also... bottles stuck through the... Mm -hmm. the exactly. And then there's the aerial photo where the water turns black, where oh. the um, uh, company is discharging into the river, and the water turns from blue to black, oh. just like that. Wow. Yeah. But I think the, the big thing that we kept coming up against is the, the lack of access to the right. river. There's two things in terms of the river and the lakes. One is to protect the ecology. I mean, it, it's sensitive. Right. And the second one is to, this is sort of paradoxical, I guess, is to provide access for the general public. I mean, if you're a general member of the public and you don't have property on the lake, you can't just go and enjoy it. I mean, right. you can go to a park, but you can't stay there late. There are certain things you can't do. And I think that's a big issue. Relicensing is, uh, especially is providing greater access to the river and the lakes for the general public. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We've talked about that before yeah. on the show. Actually, when we were talking to the president of Lake Norman Chamber, we were talking about, about is there a way? I mean, you've got parks that are on the lake, yet you can't go on the water. And right. it does mm -hmm. seem, you know, people, you, you get tourists, you saying you get tourists, and they come to the chamber, and they're like, okay, we're here, where's the lake? And they have to sign right. them up to exit 42 to Lake Norman State Park. Exactly, right. which even that, and, and um, if I could perseverate on this a minute because as you know it's very important to me I have this image in my head last week a week ago today being out at Jatan Park running on the trail out there mm -hmm. it's 96 degrees it's sweltering mm -hmm. and there's there's a family with you know mom and dad and two little kids holding hands they're in water this deep waiting mm -hmm. and the park watch person came by with a megaphone get out of the water you're not allowed to touch the water and to me that just is so painful. I, yeah. I just think it's terrible. When, you know, 50 feet out, there's people on jet skis going zzz, zzz, around people right. on rafts. Yeah. And what, where is the fairness there? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's definitely an issue, and hopefully well, it'll be something that will be addressed. Yeah. And we, well, our understanding yeah. is that, that, that there is some discussion where they're going to try and create some public beach access yeah, the Lake in Urban Cornelius. actively involved in that. I would hope yeah. so. Yeah, I understand some Cornelius people around there are looking... Mm -hmm. Or just to be able to go there at night even and right. sit by the side of the lake, you can't do it. And I think with this kind of a resource, cities all over the country are in the world are opening up their waterfronts because right. people need water. I mean, that's why people live up here, right? Right, it's yeah. Such a, a, Thank you I mean, for coming on the show, and we really appreciate you talking about your It's a pleasure, and I hope folks can go out to the Explorium and see these images and really think more about, you know, yes. The Catawba River. And, and it's running through the end of September? Yes, yes, and there is information on the Lake Norman events calendar on lknsavings.com with directions on how to get there and hours and, and all that free. information. And it's free, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having us.